came to such a verdict for a reason of grace. But I regret that we in the West weren't tougher earlier in response to aggressive and hostile actions from Moscow. So when it comes to China, a failure to act now could cost us dearly in the long run. Our governments must signal to the PRC that military aggression towards Taiwan would be a strategic mistake. The international community should agree a package of coordinated defense, economic and political measures to support Taiwan now. We need this first and foremost to protect the interests of the people of Taiwan. But it's also about protecting our interests, ensuring trade and free navigation can continue unimpeded. We need this now before it's too late. The G7 represents over 40% of global nominal GDP. And if we add our friends in the European Union, and I'm looking at you, Guy Verhofstadt, we can get to over half of the world's GDP. Now that is a hugely powerful position to be in. And we need to use that economic power for the good of freedom and democracy. That economic weight means that we can influence other countries. It means that we can make decisions about how we trade, where we invest, and what technology we export. We need to use that leverage to ensure the G7 plus its allies act as an economic NATO. People shouldn't do business with China, we do business with China. But there is a, a price now. I think there's a great human desire to not believe the worst will happen. So I think that's part of what, what we're seeing with China. The question naturally arises, though, whether our new sanctions regime should now be applied to any Chinese nationals for human rights abuses, especially in Xinjiang. There is certainly credible and actionable evidence that has been gathered against such individuals. It is now a matter for the new government to consider. While it would be naive to believe that targeted sanctions of Chinese officials in Xinjiang or higher up would lead to the elimination of such abuses, this argument alone does not negate the merit of such sanctions. The former Prime Minister, I understand there are always practical issues to consider when the relation within the relationship, not the least being the practical issues of possible impacts on Australian citizens being held by the Chinese government. However, one argument that should not prevail is that we would not progress such sanctions for a fear of political, trade or diplomatic reprisals from the Chinese government. And so my idea is for the EU itself to fundamentally integrate a number of capabilities, European armies, into a European defense union, from procurement and planning to training, intelligence, and uh, boots uh, on the ground. And this European defense union should be not independent from NATO. On the contrary, it would be, it must be the European pillar of a new style NATO with clear but global limits. If we have the same interests from some of China's unacceptable ambitions, then we need to think forces to face them together and not separately. And therefore, my plea today that NATO should evolve from an Atlantic Treaty Organization into a World Treaty Organization. Thank you. 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 Thank you.